You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. everyone, thank you for joining in to the Cybercrime Support Network uh, TV show regarding cybercrimes. Uh, my name is Kim Cassie Palangio. I am with the Cybercrime Support Network, which is a nonprofit 501c3. And with me today is Rachel Ferdinandi from Rhode Island 211, our partner in assisting victims of cybercrime. Today we're going to be focusing on tax scams and charity scams. Uh, tax scams are very prevalent this time of year. Uh, it's tax season. And scammers will use regular mail, email, robocalls to try to scam you out of your tax dollars and to try to gain your personal information. Rachel, can you tell us a little bit about some of the scams that you're seeing and what the IRS advises to protect people? Yeah, so um, the first thing I want to mention is that scams don't only happen during tax season. IRS scams can happen year-round. Um, Any time of the year, you might get an urgent phone call or someone leaving a message on your um, answering machine or voicemail uh, saying that you owe funds that you didn't know you had any debt to the IRS. You could receive a message or just a phone call or a robocall saying that the police are going to be at your door and they're going to come arrest you if you don't pay back the IRS. Um, these scams are national. Um, they can be, as you said, phone calls or emails. They even can use um, relays for deaf people, um, the TTY. Uh, relays um, and interpreters don't scam calls for don't screen calls for validity. So, so if everyone someone needs is, to be wary. So if someone is deaf or hard of hearing using that service, they yes. should know that just because it's coming through, doesn't mean that it's been cleared. A scammer Correct. can still come through that way. Correct. Thank you. So these victims are told money told that they owe money to the IRS. Um, they're told that they need to pay right now the with a gift card or a wire transfer um, and they're told that they'll be arrested or deported or they'll have their business or their driver's license suspended or their social security card suspended or canceled their social security stipend will be canceled if they don't pay this IRS debt that they've never heard of um, so is this, are any of these tactics that you're discussing, would the IRS ever use any of these tactics? Would they ever threaten to suspend Social Security number? Would they ever ask for payment in any other form? Or what form do they ask for payment? They would never ask for a gift card or a wire transfer. Um, the IRS initiates contact by mail, always by mail, um, snail mail. It will come through the to post, you through, through, through the, the postal, postal service. service. Um, they will never call to demand your payment using a specific payment method like a prepaid debit card, a gift card, or wire transfer. They would never ask for your credit card or your debit card number over the phone. That, that's very good. That's a very good point. So people should know that the IRS would never ask for your debit card or a credit card payment over the phone. Never. Um, they would never demand that you pay taxes without the opportunity to question or appeal any amount. These scammers will threaten to bring in local police, immigration officers, or other law enforcement to have you arrested for not paying. And they cannot revoke your driver's license, your business license, or your immigration status. And I've um, read also where uh, they disguise their caller ID so that you're picking up thinking that it's the IRS. And if um, you're uh, native uh, language, they can call and actually speak to you in your native language um, if it's not um, English and try to convince you that you could be deported. So these yeah. are all um, scams. Yes, I actually received a call recently from a victim who 
thought that they were going to be deported, so they paid thousands of dollars to who knows. Um, and they were told that they would be removed from the country. Now, this person is here legally. She has a green card. She pays her taxes. She, she lives at home with her child. And she lost a lot of money because they threatened her. They, they become hostile. Hmm. They will call you names. They will do anything they can to get you to pay them without double checking. And so how did she make payment for that? Was it a wire transfer, or gift cards? What in that particular case? This woman used gift cards. Okay. And again, um, if it were the IRS, they would ask for payment made to? They would ask most likely for a check mm -hmm. paid directly to the IRS. Okay. Yes. And um, what about if a scam artist contacts you um, the caller ID says it's the IRS. They present you with a name and maybe even fake badge information. Mm -hmm. What can a person do at that point uh, to determine if they're actually speaking with someone from the IRS? They can hang up the phone and look online or use the number that we're providing to call the actual IRS and determine whether they actually owe any money with a legitimate number speaking to a legitimate agent. So treat it the same way you would any other robocall. If yes. you don't know if it's um, a real bill collector, IRS included, hang up the phone and call the actual number and ask if you are being contacted by, by that organization. Yes. So um, one of the things I found when reading, I know we talked about um, the IRS will only accept payment um, usually through through check um, made to the IRS. They may um, also state that you make that payment to the United States Treasury. So anything other than United States Treasury um, or IRS is definitely um, an indication right there that you're speaking to a scam artist. Yes, definitely. Um, so these calls or emails can trick you by using something like a um, a tax transcript. So it's something that may look like your taxes via email, um, and it could have a subject that reads automatic income tax reminder, um, electric, electronic tax return reminder. These are very common right now. Anything along these lines are things you need to be wary of. Always check that, that um, return address, that email that you're um, seeing, never click a link if you think it may be a faulty email, and you can report any scam emails you may receive from someone claiming to be the IRS at um, phishing at irs.gov, and that's p-h-i-s-i-n-g at irs.gov. Okay, and also um, when these emails come in and someone is um, unsure if it's the IRS because perhaps they, or, or even a phone call, perhaps they have a lot of information that they already have on you. So kind of like pieces to the puzzle. Maybe they know your name and your birth date, or maybe they know your address. A lot of these um, types of contacts can be information that they've just kind of researched about you online. So we all have a footprint every time we, we do something online or or when we buy something at a store and, and we're kind of tracked in, in a certain sense. What do we Google? What do we research? And so they can gather that information from our online footprint or they can visit um, our social media. Maybe we're on Facebook. Maybe we um, have our birthday listed on Facebook. A lot of people do that. So just because someone has that information when they call you and they're saying they're the IRS and they have your name and birth date, they're usually just using that to fish out the other private information that they don't have, like your social security number. Yes. They'll ask you to confirm your social security number and they won't say it first. They'll ask you to confirm it. Um, never say your social security number over the phone. Um, just because somebody knows your date of birth does not mean that they are from the IRS. 
uh, there's a lot of information available online. And we need to be wary of what we're putting online, but we also need to be wary of what we're talking about on the phone. And anyone who has a question, as you said, can call the IRS directly. Yep. And they can also call 211 with a question Absolutely. if they're concerned, if the IRS is really reaching out to them. Call 211 24-7. Talk to a call specialist who can help you determine if who you're speaking to is really someone from the IRS. Absolutely. And um, also, there we wanted to talk a little bit about charity scams. This is the time of year, usually the end of year when you're doing end of year giving, or the beginning of the year where you're thinking about um, contributing, uh, maybe through your pay for the year, mm -hmm. um, a little bit each paycheck to a charity. What should people know about charity scams? So charity scams are pretty prevalent. Um, it's important if you are thinking about making a donation to a charity that you're unfamiliar with, just do a little bit of research first. You can use the Better Business Bureau to find out if a charity is legitimate. Um, most businesses are listed on the Better Business Bureau. Um, they also have a scam tracker that you can use mm -hmm. to find out what scams are going around locally, um, which is very helpful. Um, and then if you find out that it is a false charity, you can even report a scam, uh, a ch false charity, to the Better Business Bureau. Um, there's also a website called GuideStar, which is national, um, and they, um, they have a listing of every single nonprofit in the country. Okay, and, and also locally, other places that people could contact and visit websites would be the Department of Business Regulation. Yep. Um, uh, most nonprofits are registered with the Rhode Island Secretary of State. And if people are uncomfortable with researching this on their own or visiting these websites or don't have internet access, they can again just call 211 and you guys can walk them through the process of finding out if this is a legitimate charity or where they can go to find out if it's a legitimate charity. Are there any um, any calls that you've been receiving yet regarding charity scams um, or tax scams um, that you want to talk about? Well, there was the one woman that I mentioned earlier. She was the the most affected that I have spoken to. But there are plenty of people who receive these calls on a daily basis. Um, mainly, my biggest recommendation to anybody who's receiving these calls is to not pick up the phone. If you don't recognize the number or if it says it's from the IRS, don't pick up the phone. Let them leave a message. If they're legitimate, they will leave a message with a callback number. If they are not legitimate, most of the time they will have an urgent callback message. Um, give me a call back immediately or you will have the police or we'll have the police come and arrest you or something along those lines. Um, I also want to talk about abusive tax mm. schemes right now because these, it is tax season and a lot of people are afraid that they're going to owe money or they're afraid that they didn't do their taxes right, or there could be somebody taking advantage of honest citizens. Um, some people will offer to help you do your taxes fraudulently, or will say something along the lines of, I can get you out of this fine, or I can help you get more back. Um, this is abusive. This is an abusive tax scheme, um, and if 
anybody is telling you that they can get you out of a fine that you owe, they're committing fraud. And if you do it with them, you will also be committing fraud. So it's not worth it. Um, and if you are privy to any of these promoters or preparers, um, there is a mailing address and a fax number where you can send um, a completed form to the uh, IRS Lead Development Center and they will um, investigate. Great. And um, also, just to recap, I know we, we've mentioned this before, we touched on it a little bit when we're talking about um, robocalls on tax scams, but you know, robocalls can happen on any subject matter. And I know you've discussed before uh, n not picking up the phone, um, letting the person leave a message, looking up the actual phone number for that agency, or calling 211 if you, if you don't have a way to look up the actual phone number and call that agency back directly and say, hey, are you trying to reach me? And you've also mentioned that um, it's important not to pick up the call because if you do, that number is now listed as like a live number and it yes. actually opens you up to more calls. Yes. If you don't answer the phone, it will be tagged as a deadline. Is that correct? If, if you don't answer the phone, um, it will be tagged as a deadline. But if you do answer the phone, it's, it's a live line and these scammers very often sell your phone number to other scammers. So I, I very often hear people getting 20, 30 scam calls a day wow. and they get very frustrated. Um, and the only way to make them stop is to stop picking up the phone because the more you pick up the phone, the more they sell your number, the more scammers get a hold of it. That's great advice. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other um, tax or charity issues you'd like to cover before we close out? Yes. If you've experienced any monetary losses due to any IRS-related scam or incident, you can report it in two places. You can report it to the Treasury Inspectoral, Inspector General, or you can report it to the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, um, via their website. Um, it's the complaint assistant is on the screen now. Okay, great. And if um, if someone wants assistance with that, so th that's something that they can do on their own, report to those agencies in individually. Um, if they want assistance with that or they prefer to go to 211 for that assistance, will you help them uh, make those reports? Absolutely. I'll happily help. I or any um, cybercrime specialist will happily help you report any IRS related scams. Okay, and also on these type of scams, will they, will you help them fill out that IC3 report that goes to the police as well at the beginning of the call in addition to reporting to the FTC? Yes, that the IC3 report goes directly to the FBI and I'm happy to help them report that um, as well as reporting to the state police. Great, that's good information. Yeah. Um, thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Kim. Okay. We'll see you all next month. Thank you.